When I made this video a little while back, a name that I saw come up quite often in the comments was Outer Wilds. So I played Outer Wilds, and now I have a real conundrum on my hands. Here's a game with a story told entirely by exploring space in a time loop. There are no upgrades, and the only progression you have is what you learn on each loop. Awesome. Totally on board. Actually, the main reason I never finished Subnautica's story is because I spent hours building a big submarine only for it to be instantly obliterated by a leviathan when I went to the wrong neighborhood, so... With that possibility removed, there's theoretically nothing stopping me from enjoying a game like Outer Wilds. And yet, here I am, walking on eggshells, because I'm a little afraid that if I say the sentence, I didn't love Outer Wilds, someone's going to murder me, or worse, call me stupid. I know a lot of people really love this game, and for good reason. It uses some fairly groundbreaking storytelling techniques, and the solar system is a fascinating place to explore. And I was really enjoying my time with it until... I... wasn't. Look, there's not really any other way to put this, so I'm just gonna lay the cards out on the table. I played about 16 hours of Outer Wilds. I did not finish the game, and I don't really have a desire to go back to it. And I swear I'm not telling you this just to be that guy who's like, Oh, your favorite band? They're shit. They're a shitty band. I'm telling you this because playing this game left me with kind of a burning question. What could cause me, someone who rants and raves about loving great video game storytelling, to bounce off a game that's almost universally revered for its storytelling? Is it my fault? Is it the game's fault? Is it Twitch chat's fault? Well, obviously Twitch chat is always guilty of something, but what happened exactly? Well, let's start from the beginning. Billions of years ago, the Earth was a mo I started the game the same way I imagine everybody does, walking around, learning about this thing, learning about that thing, eventually landing at the museum. The museum is where the game first starts really planting seeds for the mystery. I know the very first thing you see is the probe cannon going off, but the first time I saw it, I said... Damn, that's a gas giant. Obviously, I'd later find out that A, that planet isn't a gas giant, and B, that thing blowing up in orbit around the planet is actually pretty important, but what really caught my eye was the really big, really close planet. Sure enough, my first few hours of the game were basically spent looking around the solar system going, ooh, what's this thing? Ooh, what's that thing? And I think the game does a good job of funneling that natural curiosity in the direction of the mystery. By now, you're probably asking, why do you keep saying the mystery like that? Why is it capitalized? Allow me to explain. After you spend a little time in the solar system, it becomes pretty obvious that there's some weird stuff going on. The sun goes supernova really fast, and when you die, you wake up about 20 minutes earlier with all of your memories. You'll also start finding these written logs everywhere, left behind by an ancient technologically advanced precursor civilization. It's a pretty standard bread and butter sci-fi setup, but usually in games, research and discovery of this stuff is something that sits in the backdrop. It's something that usually happens off-screen until there's something really important to the plot that you need to know. In Outer Wilds, research and discovery are everything. You're not just uncovering a mystery, you're uncovering THE mystery. Everything that you do in the game is in service of THE mystery. If you aren't on your way to investigating something, you are investigating something, usually in the form of reading something or solving a puzzle. There's also characters you can talk to, but I'll come back to that later. Let's just say for now that the three things that you do in this game are traverse the environment, uncover information, and solve puzzles. All of which are in service of the mystery. I know those last two are a bit nebulous and debatably the same thing, but I'm just talking about the gameplay differences here. Reading a wall of text and being presented with a physical puzzle are two different things, despite there being a lot of overlap between the two. Let's start with traversing the environment, or environments, plural. There's a few of them. All of them are pretty unique, with varying levels of gravity, environmental hazards, other fun bells and whistles. One such bell and or whistle is time. The environments all change in different ways over time until the time loop resets and they do their thing all over again. It's a pretty cool design move to keep the same locations fresh when you go back to them repeatedly at different times, which you will do many times because locations adapting and changing also locks certain things away and unlocks other things, which staggers your progression in between loops. That's not a bad thing on its own, but let's talk about the other half of traversing the environment. The traversing part. I found using the ship and the jetpack to be anywhere from okay to dick-blisteringly frustrating. 
Obviously, you can't expect the snappiest, most responsive movement in low to zero gravity. That's just not how momentum works. Although, funny enough, there are other parts of the game where science is bended. But let's just stick to the movement mechanics. I think what you can see here of my movement basically sums up how clunky it feels. And unfortunately, that also goes for the ship, too. The game doesn't technically require you to do many precise maneuvers, but something about the way that you bumble about bumping into everything, it, it just slowly started to aggravate me. Maybe that's my terminal counter-strike brain rot demanding for precise movement, or maybe the natural inconsistencies of gravity are just too much for the feeble jetpack and the, oh, the spaceship. Either way, traversing space is a big chunk of the game, and Beyond occasionally ooing and aahing at the scenery, getting around is kind of boring at best and pretty annoying at worst. And that's especially disappointing to me because the game plays with cool mechanics like jetpack platforming or landing your ship on a moving target, gravity changing direction, but they're all implemented in these situations that are either painfully simple or painfully, uh, painful. For example, landing on moving targets, it's easy, you just match the speed and you go in. Unless you're trying to land on the sun station where that just doesn't really work that well and failure means burning to death. If you do land your ship on the sun station, you discover that your ship's artificial gravity just isn't strong enough. You can't like get out of the ship unless you position it correctly and then you like ditch it into the sun to get inside. And you know what the worst part is? The entire time I was trying to do this, I knew it was a waste of time. Like, I don't know how to get onto those walk pads. Okay, if I can stay straight for like 10 seconds. Walk, you bastard. Yeah, I can't even walk. It seems like I'm not supposed to do this. There's a much easier- well, yeah, no shit, I've gathered that. There's no way that's the fucking intended way to get in there. I assume there's some teleporter somewhere that lets you get in on foot. But I feel like if you if you can fucking land on the station with your ship, you should just be able to get in. Had I got into the station manually, accomplishing what's probably one of the hardest tasks in the game, do you know what my reward would have been? The confirmation of some information that I basically already knew walking in. I could have spent all this time scouring other places for more clues, but I was so deprived of any opportunities to do cool space stuff with my cool space gear that I literally threw myself at the sun repeatedly for an hour and a half. Oh, since I'm on the topic, I, I want to just quickly mention the autopilot. I know the game makes jokes about it, but the autopilot on the ship being bad is actually just- it's just bad. Like, it, it's cute as a gag because your ship is a piece of junk made out of wood and scrap, but when you expect a feature like autopilot not to kill you, and then it does, that sucks. It's not a huge deal, but it's symbolic of the kind of grating issues that really wore me down as I was playing. I know it may not have even been an afterthought to some of you, and I might sound like a baby complaining about how- Look, is this, is this your therapy session? No, it's not. It's my mental illness. I get to write the pedantic 2,000 word scripts. So traversing the environment was kind of a dud for me. Uh, how about puzzles? Everybody likes puzzles. I think the puzzles in this game are interesting. A really interesting one is where they teach you to freeze the position of quantum objects by taking a picture of them, because their position is determined when you observe them. And then you use that understanding to land on the quantum moon, which, being a quantum object, will disappear or appear if you look away. So if you try to stare at the quantum moon while landing on it normally, that doesn't work because, uh... Uh... Hold on one second. Uh, that doesn't work because... The atmosphere around the moon obscures your vision of it, but only when you get inside of it? So this doesn't count as observing the moon, but this does. Because... The atmosphere isn't a part of the moon, even though it moves with it and might be quantumly entangled with it. Look, I hate to be the Neil deGrasse Tyson in the room, but like, if you're gonna make the entire premise of this quantum superposition mechanic about observing or not observing an object, I'm still not really sure about the quantum moon, to be honest. I don't think it's as simple as like, take, uh... I don't think it's that simple though. Landing on the quantum moon, you've, you, you're still seeing it. It never leaves your sight when you land on it. 
So why would it make sense for you to have to have a second observation of the quantum moon to land on it? That wouldn't make any sense, because you're still observing it. Like, that's the whole point, is that it's there as you're observing it. And you don't stop perceiving it when you land on it, so why does it disappear? Okay, how the fuck? Let's move on to uncovering information, or in simpler terms, reading things. The writing in this game, which is basically all dialogue, implies the existence of characters, but to call the people in this game characters kind of feels like a stretch, honestly. It's not that their writing is bad, it just lacks. It just lacks. I never really felt anything about anyone in particular. It seems like the primary purpose of people in this game is to point you in the direction of things. They have history and sometimes even feel things, but they have no real presence. The way their dialogue is written and structured reminds me kind of of animatronics in a weird way. I had hoped and maybe even expected the logs of the ancient alien species from outside of the galaxy to have a degree of mystery and mystique, and for a little bit it does, but there's only so many menial conversations you can read before it becomes apparent that the only real mystery in this game is the mystery. That's the real meat and potatoes of this game, and it's a bit of a double-edged sword. People say in reviews of this game that it's their favorite game they wish they could forget everything about, or it's their favorite game with zero replayability. I initially thought that was a bit hyperbolic, but I think there's actually a lot of truth to it. There are multiple endings in the DLC, sure, and you probably aren't going to catch every single bit of information on the first playthrough, but how much of the text are you going to want to reread on a second or third playthrough? Beyond revealing the secrets of the mystery, which is usually interesting, what is going to bring you back to all these words after you've figured it out? The answer for a lot of people, even for those who love the game, seems to be nothing. Once you're finished with the mystery, there is basically no reason to pull out the translator and read things that you've already read, but is that necessarily a bad thing? Well, no. I'd say the same could also go for games like Return of the Obra Dinn, where once you've solved the mystery, you sit back and you're like, damn, I can't ever do that for the first time again. What I think the difference here is for me is that the mystery in Obra Dinn is riveting and really engaging, and the mystery in Outer Wilds... Well, I didn't finish it, did I? I suppose the real question is, how could I know whether or not the payoff of the mystery is worth the journey if I never get to the end? And the answer is, I can't know, really. Well, that's not entirely true, because I looked it up afterwards and I wasn't that impressed, but all of that's immaterial. Games like Outer Wilds require you to have faith in the mystery. Faith that your time and effort is a good investment, and that it will be rewarded by the end. If you lose faith in the mystery, the great pillar holding the game up can erode, until eventually it collapses. That's not something that happened for the vast majority of people who have played Outer Wilds, but what can I say? It happened to me. Now, could I have saved myself and you about 15 to 20 minutes or however long this video is by just saying that the gameplay loop wasn't satisfying enough to see the story through to the end? Eh, maybe. But when it comes to games like this, you really do have to tell the full story.